So in this video, we're going to talk about exam question two from the specimen paper from exam one, and that's for the new spec on the AQA exam board. Now, the first question is fairly straightforward. It's really a recall question, and that's A01. And it asks us to describe how oxygen in the air reaches the blood capillaries that surround the alveoli in the lungs. Now, it does tell us underneath, and this is quite important, so you should take a highlighter pen in the exam and highlight the bits of the question that really stand out. Details of breathing or ventilation are not required. So we don't need to spend ages talking about the ventilation mechanism of inspiration i.e. the ribs move up and out, external intercostal muscles and the diaphragm, etc. We don't need that in this particular question. So the mark scheme then, if we just quickly go through it, we know oxygen gas in the air moves from the external atmosphere down the trachea. We know it then moves through both bronchi, the left bronchus and the right bronchus. And we know each bronchus uh, splits into smaller bronchioles that eventually feeds the alveoli with the, uh, the fresh oxygen. Now, we know oxygen gas is drawn from higher pressure to lower pressure down a pressure gradient, so it's important to mention this. There's high external pressure in the outside atmosphere, and we know the ventilation mechanism helps to establish a lower pressure inside the chest cavity, the thorax, inside the alveoli. We know once in the air sacs of the alveoli, oxygen has to get out of the alveoli, so it has to simply diffuse across the wall of the alveoli or the lining of the alveoli and that's made from squamous epithelia. We know squamous epithelia is cells that are very thin and very flat and they're interconnected and that's collectively a short diffusion pathway. And the last point for our four is to mention that once the oxygen has actually left the alveoli it has to diffuse into the blood capillary. Now, to do that, it has to get across the endothelial cells that form the capillary wall. And again, that will just be by simple diffusion because oxygen is nonpolar and not charged. Now, the second part of the question gives us a bit of detail. The first definition is called the forced expiratory volume or FEV. So we can actually just quickly highlight that. And you should do this in the exams. You can take in a highlighter pen and you can put some uh, annotations and some notes on the graph itself. Now that's the greatest volume of air a person can breathe out or expire in one second. Now the next definition is called forced vital capacity or FVC. Now that's the greatest volume of air a person can breathe out or expire in a single breath. So that's a little bit different. That's not one second, but it's one breath, FVC. We're then given some information on a graph, some data, and there's three experiments really or three groups of people here that they've uh, measured the expiratory rate on so we've got group a and it does tell us that group a are the healthy people with healthy lungs it gives us group b and then group c and it does tell us that group b and group c are two cohorts of people that have different lung conditions but it doesn't tell us what lung condition group b has and it doesn't tell us what lung condition group C has. Now, the first thing we should do when we uh, get some data or a graph is look at the labels. So if we look at the label on the y-axis, going up the left-hand side, that's the dependent variable. That's the, the variable that's been measured. And in this case, it's the volume of air expired or breathed out in dm cubed. That's decimeter cubed. And the x-axis that goes along the bottom of the graph, that represents the time in seconds that that volume of air has been measured, the expired air. Now, if we just look at the, the data, we can see a couple of things straight away. We can see that the, the healthy cohort of people have a very high volume of air that's been expired in the first second. So they've got a high FEV. But then after one second, the volume of air that's been expired starts to um, plateau somewhat. So actually the FVC for a healthy person or the healthy group of people is actually, if we just read it across, 5 dm cubed. That's the total volume of air being breathed out um, in one breath. Now for group B, um, the initial volume of air being breathed out um, is actually quite similar. So there's quite a high volume of air being breathed out for the people in group B. So we can see that here on the left-hand side. 
But once that maximum volume of air in that first breath has been breathed out, again, we can see a plateau here. Now that plateaus at a lower volume compared to group A. So because we've got this difference here, we might start to think about the people in group B have a smaller lung capacity, so a smaller volume inside the alveoli of their lungs collectively. So they can breathe out at similar rate to start with, but actually there's less air being expired compared to the healthy people in group A. Now, if we look at group C, uh, we start with actually a slightly different shape to the curve. So group C, there's a shallower volume of air being breathed out. So a smaller volume of air being expired in DM cubed um, over time. But if we watch this curve, the volume of air being breathed out actually at this point here where I've just put the cross increases above the maximum volume of air in group B. So it suggests that actually the lung capacity of the people in group C might not be affected because the volume of air being breathed out goes above that of group B. But it actually might be something to do with a blockage in the airways. So it's harder for the people in group C to breathe that air out or expire that air because there's some sort of blockage or narrowing of the bronchioles, for example. So question B asks us to calculate the percentage drop. So we'll highlight there, percentage drop in FEV for group C compared to the healthy group of people. So we need two values here. We need the FEV for the healthy group and we need the FEV for group C. Now, when we do a percentage decrease or even a percentage increase, we first work out the difference. So in this case, it'll be the drop in the value in group C compared to the healthy pe people. We then divide it by the original value, which in this case is the healthy value. And we times it by 100 to get percentage. So if we look at the graph again in the data and you should take a ruler and you should draw off lines to get certain values and do it nice and accurately. So the first line we're going to do is at one second and that's the FEV value, the maximum volume of air breathed out in the first second. And we want to compare group C with group A. So we draw a very accurate line going up from one second where the line intersects group A. We draw across and we read off the graph. So that is 4.2 dm cubed of air is being expired from group A. Uh, group A. Now, if we do the same for group C and we uh, intersect the line of group C and we read off, we can see actually this time there's 0.8 dm cubed of air being expired in the first second from group C. So there's quite a big difference there. And we can work out the difference straight away. So it's just 4.2 minus 0.8, and that gives us 3.4 dm cubed as the difference. So when we do our calculation, what we need to look at is the difference, which we can calculate. So we've just done that, so that's 3.4. But then we always divide that value, so the difference value, by the original value, which in this case is the value for the healthy people, which is 4.2. That's that bit there and then because it's a percentage drop we want to times it by 100 so if we do these uh, on a calculator what we'll find is that actually the percentage drop in group c compared to the healthy group is 80.95 percent which is four significant figures or two decimal places so the third question asks us about asthma and fibrosis now it tells us that asthma affects the bronchioles and therefore reduces the flow of air in and out of the lungs. Now we know asthmatics, if they breathe in dust or pollen or any particular antigens, they might have an autoimmune reaction in the walls of the bronchioles. Now that causes swelling of the wall of the bronchiole, which can reduce the, the lumen size. Now asthmatics then have a hard problem expiring um, air from the lungs, and that has a knock-on effect of inspiration as well. Now fibrosis is slightly different because as it says here, it does not affect the bronchioles. It reduces the volume of the lungs. So if you've got fibrotic lungs, um, there's actually no issue necessarily with the bronchioles. It's just that the actual volume of air being expired is going to be a lot less 
um, because of the, the reduced volume of the lungs. So we're going to use this data or this information, if you like, in our answer. And it also then tells us to use the information provided in figure two to determine which group B or C is the one containing people with fibrosis of the liver. So is it B or is it C? So if we look at the data again, we can just have a quick um, analysis here. Now, if we look at group C, we can see the initial expiration of air. Um, there's only a very small volume in DM cubed being expired. But as time passes, so up to 10 seconds, we can see the volume of air being expired in group C goes above that of the air being expired in group B. So the people in group B have already reached their FVC, their forced vital capacity. And that probably occurs around about here in the people in group B because there's no more air being expired after this point. However, the air being expired in group C continues above this value and it'll probably continue higher and higher, uh, maybe for 20 seconds or so. So this tells us actually that the people in group B, because their initial volume of air being expired is kind of similar to group A, um, they're the ones that are going to suffer from fibrosis of the lungs. And that means a reduced volume because actually there's a decrease between the expired volume of air in group A versus the expired volume in group B, suggesting the reduced volume of the lungs. Now group C, it just suggests that maybe it's the bronchioles that have narrowed because the air being expired goes above the air being expired in group B. They're struggling to get that air out. It's not that the there's a reduced volume of air in the lungs. There's not. It's probably the, the same or similar to group A. They're just struggling to get it out. So it's going to take longer. So we're going to start to look at the mark scheme using this information. So the first mark point is for saying that the people in group B um, have fibrosis because they're initially breathing out at a similar rate to the healthy people. But the people in group B have a lower FVC, so the force vital capacity that we're going to try and use because that was given to us in the question. So the total volume uh, being breathed out is reduced compared to the healthy people. This indicates that the bronchioles are not affected, but the overall volume of the lungs is smaller because of these fibrotic lesions or scars within the, uh, the lung tissue. Now, the people in group C have a higher FVC, so the forced vital capacity, the maximum amount of air that can be expired, because that rises above group B on our graph, indicating that the bronchioles are affected in C, people in group C, because they've got a narrow lumen of the bronchioles, but that the lung volume is not being affected here. And that will give us four possible marks. It's out of three, so this would give us three out of three.